National parks are some of the most beautiful places on the planet, but a sad truth is that many people go missing in them. Over 250,000 individuals are reported missing every year, with estimates of actual missing person cases that are left unreported pushing that total to more than 300,000 cases. With that many reports, it's no wonder that a vast majority of these cases are left unsolved. One national park disappearance that got solved was that of Sailor Gilliams, and the argument has been made that the only thing that saved her life was her red hair. Sailor was hiking in Santa Barbara, California with her friend Brendan Vega. Although both of them were excited to get going, both of them were inexperienced when it came to this kind of trek. The terrain around this area is known for being dangerous, and in the past many experienced hikers have warned those from taking on this kind of environment. As time passed, the couple noticed that it started to get dark, and thought it would be best if they head back. However, things would take a turn for the worse as they couldn't find their car. Sailor then jumped off a rock and badly hurt her leg. Unfortunately, things for the pair would only get worse. They decided to get their phones out so they could call for help, but realised that both of them were out of battery. They also had no flashlight. Vega then tried to carry Sailor. However, this act would cause him to fall over and break his glasses, break his elbow and also break Sailor's ankle in the process. Vega told Sailor to stay where she was and that he was going to find help. However, this would be the last time that Sailor saw him. Sailor said the following about the event. I was yelling for help all night and the rest of the next day, even though I was losing consciousness. At some point I didn't think anyone would find me. I felt like no one would save me. End quote. By the next day she was exhausted after screaming all through the night. Luckily at this time a group of hikers passed through the area with one of them noticing something red in the corner of their eye. As they looked closer, they could see that this belonged to a woman. The hiker, Nicole Gergen, said she saw a flame of red hair in the corner of her eye, and after approaching her knew that her injuries were potentially life-threatening. They immediately phoned for help. One of the members of the group said the following, This route has dangerous boulders and rocks so no one else was there. Plus, it was a Monday afternoon during work hours. I mean, I was only there at the time because I was unemployed. End quote. Sailor's mother and aunt were soon contacted, with her mother saying the following. I've been so frightened. I'd gone to the police department. We had no idea where she was. End quote. This story doesn't have a happy ending, though. While Sailor was being attended to in hospital, she found out that Vega had been found, unfortunately passing away from his injuries. It's said that he fell while he was looking for help. The sad truth is that many people who go missing in national parks are never found. Every now and then there's a series of missing cases that emerge that are so peculiar, they become the subject of internet theories. Known as the Missing 411, there appears to be a substantial number of missing person cases relating to the disappearance of individuals from national parks. In fact, many of these missing 411 cases are believed to not be investigated too deeply, as some form of supernatural cover-up takes place in these undisturbed locations. Maurice Gordon Dr. Metz was an 84-year-old Christian reverend, of whom had a relatively successful writing career during his time, and worked as a Christian leader of his small community, with a number of successful publications under his belt, such as his works titled Focal Points of Christian History, Trouble Transformed, Burden Bearing and Mystery of Godliness. Unfortunately, Doc was suffering from a severe blood disorder that made it difficult for him to be alone and had several arthritis complications that prevented him from being able to move without assistance. Despite these physical limitations, Doc enjoyed spending his free time venturing out into the wilderness, 
to locate ideal conditions for mining precious gems and minerals. Doc had been a fan of leading his own private expeditions in the field of geology, and would often invite a close friend of his to accompany him when making trips out into national parks, or empty stretches of wilderness to assist him during their trip, and help him move throughout the rugged terrain. Doc's fascination for the field of geology would eventually lead him to joining the American Federation of Mineral Societies, a Flatterons Gem and Mineral Club, becoming an experienced veteran of private expeditions and mining efforts. It's for these reasons that it came as a shock to the wife of Doc when he suddenly disappeared, and this happened when venturing out into the Pike National Forest, located in the Forest Range of Colorado, and this happened when taking a trip with his close friend McSherry. According to McSherry, the two had found a small sandy pit close to the Rampart Range Road, when McSherry said he left Doc to venture out an extra 50 yards, and this was to find his own sandy pit to dig from. After around two hours of mining, McSherry returned to Doc and told him they would be driving home soon because it was getting dark. Doc had said he would start gathering his tools while McSherry returned to his pit. After McSherry finished packing his things, he'd returned to Doc's pit only to find that he completely disappeared without a trace. When investigations were made, detectives remarked that the disappearance of Doc seemed perplexing, as there were no evidence of a struggle or any footsteps, markings or tracks left behind in any direction. Additionally, all of Doc's tools went missing with him, and nothing was left in the pit to be used as evidence. On the 18th of July 1981, the wife of Maurice Gordon Doc wrote a letter to her governor, Governor Richard Lamb asking for any assistance in helping find her husband. The letter detailed that she believed that details were being covered up, with thoughts that he'd met some kind of foul play, or had been carried away and their efforts for an investigation were being stopped by unseen forces. Despite this letter, no further action was taken. So what do you make of these National Park stories? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.